Hello. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have a terrible confession to make. I'm a mathematician. <laughs> it sounds like, almost like I'm an, an accountant. And you know, from school you remember mathematics is almost like accounting, you know, dull and, 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 and difficult. Probably from, also from school you might remember, ah, you might remember this guy, sorry, went a little bit too far. Uh, so generally he has got some strong features, but that's not a sociological talk about lumber sexuals, so I will skip this part. So please raise your hands, anyone who, who knows this guy in the audience. Very good, so probably at least some of you are right, that's Thales himself, and you might remember his theorems from school. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, mathematics is pretty ancient, just look at the guy, but it's also pretty modern, in that sense that is behind all information and communication technology that has revolutionized last uh, 30 years. Just to bring you, you know, three examples, the first one would be uh, wireless communication, and global connectivity. Uh, the second one would be the internet, or you know, for the younger ones, you don't know the internet because you don't use it anymore. You use Facebook and Snapchat <laughs> and other things, obviously. Uh, and, uh, and the third one, it will be these dot-com billionaires. Do you know these guys? Please raise your hands. Who knows these guys? Very good, thank you very much. So it's uh, Bill Gates, young Bill Gates himself. Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg, I'm very sorry, and you know there is a rumor in circulation that actually each of these guys had his first million before first sex. So that's you know one of these uh, features of the dot-com revolution. Uh, so anyway, what I'm going to tell you is that uh, mathematics is going to change next 30 years very much the same way uh, as ICT did over the last 30 years. And uh, I'm going to prove it. So I will begin in broad, broad strokes. So by chance, do you know who is the second uh, biggest employer of mathematicians on the planet? Anyone? Well, that's NSA, National Security Agency. That's uh, US government agency for the very long time called no such agency, that is National Security Agency, and they deal with government communication. So coding, cryptography, and so on. Uh, they were established at the very beginning of the Cold War, so most of us were not here on the planet, so early 50s, uh, I presume. And since then, they've been employing mathematicians. Why is it so? Let me illustrate it with one example. So let's assume that, uh, that you want to guess a password. And let's assume that password is written in the Latin character set, so it's standard 26 letters. Right? No funny things, no Hans simplified Chinese 10,000 letters, characters whatsoever. So it's a, from the beginning, let's assume that it's a single letter. So if you have no clue what you have to do, you have to run through all 26 letters in order to guess it. So very good, but that's so-called brute force attack. And if it's only a single letter, then it's only 26 letters. Not a very difficult thing. Please excuse me, but I got, got called two days ago, and uh, still I wanted to talk to you, so there might be some unplanned interruptions. Uh, so anyway, assume that it's two characters. So then obviously you have two letters to guess. So 26 in uh, the first letter, 26 the second one, and for every you know, letter from the first set, you have to check all the letters from the other set. So you have to multiply these numbers. So uh, the ones among you that you know do quick calculations, you already know it's 676, obviously. Uh, and you know, not that many people actually do passwords on two characters. So <laughs> some obviously do on three or even more. So just to simplify it, again, 26 times six, uh, 676. And if you go with your calculations, probably you know it's over 17,000. Uh, still, you know, you see that the number grows very quickly with the, uh, the number of calculations grows very quickly with the number of characters. And, you know, in mathematics and also in uh, science, very often we actually use graphs to illustrate the relations. 
or relationships. And let's assume that on this axis, you've got the number of characters. Let's call it x. You remember, we do mathematics after all. And here, we may place time or generally how much resources you need to use in order to, to, guess, to guess the password. So uh, the curve, the, if you do things the way that I showed you, the brute, the brute force way, will roughly look like this with the number of characters. At some point, you get this hockey stick effect. We call it, in mathematics, we call it exponential growth. And uh, the curve goes to the infinity, as we call it in mathematics. In plain English, it's, it goes through the roof. <laughs> uh, and as you can see from this graph, there is a certain limit to the number of characters uh, after which we are not able to, to guess it efficiently. So, why do we need mathemat uh, mathematicians? Because with the mathematics, you can find some more clever way of getting the password, and usually the relation looks roughly like this. So, although at the beginning, guessing may, might be a little bit more efficient, but in the long run, you are winning with mathematics. Very cool stuff and very good reason to pay all these guys in, you know, secret government communications. Especially the ones that, you know, break the codes for the, for the opponents. So, anyway, uh, I asked you who, is, uh, who was, you know, the, 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 the second employer. So, any ideas who was the first one? Anyone wants to guess? Not the ones that heard this talk before. Okay, the colleague was right. Actually, ladies and gentlemen, it is Google itself. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we moved a little bit too far. Uh, it's Google. And why is it so? Well, Google business is about collecting vast amount of data and monetizing it. It means turning data into the money at the end, but in the middle of this process, you need to turn data into useful information. And you do it uh, using the algorithms. The more clever your algorithms, the better your result is. And for this, you need mathematicians, because if you try to do it brute force, hard way, not a smart way, you end up with this exponential relation. If you employ mathematicians, you end up with that sort of relations. That's a very simple reason why Google employs that, that many mathematicians. Uh, what is more interesting about Google is the fact that, remember, on one side, the second employer, the second biggest employer, is a well-funded big government agency. They are still employing, getting more and more people. On the other hand, you've got the company that has been around, like, you know, 15 years, and in this time, this company managed to actually overtake, in terms of research and financial strength, this very big, well-funded government agency. The times are changing. So anyway, you already saw this slide before. You know this gentleman. So uh, it's a good moment to, to, tell you, to tell you one story about this gentleman, because probably, uh, probably you, you also know from school that apart from being a mathematician, this guy was a quite famous philosopher. And you know, with philosophers, it's always the same. They say that you know, they are after some you know, higher things, and they are not concerned with money that much. right? And obviously, usually, it ends up in some sort of talks like, you know, if I wanted to make money, I would make money. Yeah, yeah, money, 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 money walks bullshit. Uh, mm, sorry, money talks, bullshit walks. Show me your money. If you are so smart, why you don't have money? So there are various resolutions to these problems. Actually, uh, Thales, resol uh, Thales decided to follow one of the simplest way. It means he decided to show that actually he's able to make money, and he had quite, you know, funny scheme. At his time, uh, actually, one of the major business in Greece was growing, you know, olive trees. Actually, you know, some of you might be surprised that these things happened before the European Union, but that's true. This, you know, oil, olive trees, tree business was, was around at that time. And at that time, actually, if you wanted to, you had a harvest once or twice a year, and if you wanted to conserve your oils, uh, sorry, olives, you, wanted, uh, you had to press the, 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 the oil. You used some sort of such a device, we have a special antique picture uh, for you. At the time, it was, you know, really high tech. If you, if you look carefully, you know, it's, there, is, there, 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 there is a description. So, Thales decided to go high tech. Because of his mathematical calculation, he was able to predict what sort of harvest is going to happen a few months in advance. What he did next, he went around his home city, contacted every owner of the oil press, and offered a deal. Uh, I give you some money for the right to use the oil, uh, oil press as a first. Sort of the option 
to use that press. And when very big harvest happened, all the people were, you know, the owners of the oils, they were flocking to, to, to press the oil, right? But then the owner was saying, okay, but there is this guy by the name Thales, and he has got the priority. So they had to buy back at the significant premium. That's how he made, you know, very big money. Uh, he showed off, whining, dining, going out with beautiful ladies. Probably he would drive a Cadillac if it was available at the time. Uh, but he proved his point. And uh, actually what he also did, he did what we do quite often in mathematics, we construct models. And now, as for the next slide, uh, that's a Chippendale moment, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you very much. We are going to talk serious business. So I put jacket on. Uh, please raise your hands if you can hear me. Okay, good. So we tried that many times and usually the mic has to go off at the main event, not at the trials. I'm very sorry for that. But let's go back to the serious talk. So, uh, what we do in mathematics, we build models. Uh, but that's not only what we do. This picture probably you know is a Big Bang picture. It's the way that the universe expands. But if you think carefully for a while, uh, actually, how do we know it? Because we know the state of the universe today. On this basis, we build model. And somehow, you, you, uh, we are available to calculate, uh, or we can calculate what happened before, right? It's running model uh, backward in time. You can also run it forward in time to ask the questions about future. More modern and down-to-earth example, what you see here is a big petrochemical installation. What it does, it turns oil into fuels. If you want to do it efficiently, uh, actually, uh, you need to apply extra procedures to get more fuels from one barrel of oil. You use hydrogen under very strong pressure, high temperatures, and so on and so on. Very dangerous process. And actually, if things go wrong, well, it's not only that CNN shows that, but you can see the results from the orbit, right? You get really nice mushroom cloud. Uh, all the features supported maybe by but, but radioactivity, right? You don't get radioactivity in this case, but otherwise, it's, it's look alike for nuclear explosion. Uh, in this case, uh, they have a problem that at some point, this installation has to be stopped for the maintenance. But this is unsolved problem, and they are not able to foresee in advance before the things start to shake, happen really, you know, in the, go in the, in, into the really bad direction. And actually, they wanted, you know, very professional people, very expensive installation. And actually, what they wanted to, uh, to do is to find out uh, how, to, uh, how, 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 how to improve it. They placed lots of sensors on the installation uh, in the mistaken belief that if you collect lots of data, you will be wiser, you will get knowledge. Well, that's a mistake because, you know, they collected more data, but they were not getting any more information. Which brings me to the next point. It's a poem, actually. Poem, everybody. And it says, Programmer's Lament. I really hate this damn machine. I wish that they would sell it. It never does quite what I like, but only what I tell it. So, is this poem about computers? What do you think? Raise your hands. Is it about computers? Okay, or is it about mathematics, maybe? Well, the important part is what I tell it. Because coding is like, you know, speaking another language. Mathematics is another language. Uh, data is not information. You need to structure it. Even if you have information, this is not knowledge. And we are back to the same gentleman again. I told you the story about how he managed to, to show that if you know mathematics, you can get rich. You know, money for nothing and the chicks for free, as they say. So uh, let's talk serious business. Actually, he did more. Uh, he, what he did was just to design so-called option contracts, contract, or in the more general term, uh, financial derivative contract. And this is something that is fundamental to modern financial industry. You know, this multi-zillion dollar business that runs from London City, Singapore, Tokyo to uh, to, 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 to New York. And they use very powerful computer, and they pay top mathematicians uh, to do it right. Why? Again, 
the same graph that you already know. It's about efficiently, efficiency and it's about doing things smart, not hard. Uh, anyway, I'm coming, to the, I'm coming almost to an end. And what I wanted to tell you is that uh, computers, they start to program themselves more and more. But still, there are things that computers are not capable of doing. And for this, you need mathematics in order to tell them what to do. And that's the, uh, that's the heart of the matter. So uh, mathematician is the visionary that sees the future before it, uh, before it, uh, it unveils. Uh, and at this point, you might start to ask yourself questions. Uh, have I stuffed up my life? Did I, did, I, did I screw my life? I didn't study mathematics after all. So what shall I do? Shall I jump off the window? By the way, anybody you know, willing jump, to jump off the window? Please, raise your hands. Well, very good. Most of you are observant. No windows in this room. So if you just wanted, to, uh, to, uh, wanted my advice, I would say the following. Please note, mathematics is going to be behind more and more things. So keep calm and carry on. But remember, try to take advantage and capitalize on the trend, because sky is the limit. <laughs>